Okay, in my 2003 Dodge Caravan, and I'm gonna turn my AC on. Got it on full blast, and my AC is not blowing out cold. It's freaking hot. I'm gonna show you that my uh, my compressor is not my compressor clutch is not engaging. It should be on right now. Okay, as you guys can see. That clutch right there is not engaged. See how the uh, compressor clutch is not kicking in? I suspect that's because I have low refrigerant and my pressure switch is not allowing the computer to turn it on. So I'm going to test my theory. Just a simple test light. Now, I'm going to show you guys. I don't know how well you can see this on here, but I'm going to show you. What's, what's stopping that compressor from kicking on. Now as you see here, there's, there's a, uh, hard to see this thing, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, there's a relay here that's inside this box here, and I'm gonna show you guys that, but basically, power comes down and waits for this coil to get energized. Now the coil gets its power from, from, this, from this way, and what turns the coil on is a ground signal from the powertrain control module. But the powertrain control module will not send that ground and turn this on as long as this AC pressure switch here, the signal coming off of that, if that is a low signal or low pressure, it'll shut this power, the powertrain control module will not ground this out. Now, I'm going to do some tests in here. I'm going to turn on the switch and turn on the AC and I'm betting that we're going to see uh, a power here, a power here, a ground here, and nothing here because this computer is not turning it on. We'll see if I'm right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to look in this box here. If I can get it open. Jeez. Okay. Now looking at this, the AC clutch is this one right here, which is one, two, three, four over. So one, two, three, four. The AC clutch is right here. So I'm going to pull this relay. Now these pins aren't labeled, but this is labeled on the back of this. So uh, it, it shows you what pin 30 is, pin 86, 87, and 85. And it shows you on this schematic here. So according to this, uh, pin 30 should be power. Pin 86 should be power. 87 should be a pathway to ground. And 85 should be the pin coming from the, from the power control module. So let me go turn this on and see what happens. So I'm going to hook up my test light to the negative. And as you can see, my light's burning bright, nice and good. So, according to this, uh, 86 and 30, and uh, this here is 30, and it's lighting up. So that means my 30, my fuse is good. That's on my contact side. Now the coil side is 86. So that should be here. That's power. 87 should be a ground. Let me switch this to power. That's uh, 87. 87 is is a pathway to ground through the clutch through the through the compressor. So that's good. This is the one I don't have. I don't have a ground here. I'm not getting a signal from my computer. The computer is not turning this on. And I suspect it's because the uh, pressure is low, low, low refrigerant. I'm going to add some. I don't know how well you can see this, but 
basically to make that compressor turn on uh, 85 and 86 is the coil I want to jump across the two contacts so I'm going to put a jumper wire in 30 and 87 and when I do that that should make the uh, compressor engage I'm going to see if it does basically this lower one here basically this lower one here across to there the top one caddy corner and as you can see I got that one plugged in plugged in right there I'm going to plug this one in right here that should kick on my compressor which it does see that kicking on down there kicks off kicks on That's how you make your manually make your compressor kick on. You hear it running down there. So when I go to add refrigerant, I'm going to hook up my refrigerant, then I'm going to turn this on. Actually, I'm going to see if it's blowing cold now. Which it's not. It's low on refrigerant. Okay, so I figured out how to manually turn on that compressor. Like I said, it was just by jumping a wire from here to here. So it's hard to hear me with the with the car running, but I just went across 30 to 87. 30 to 87. Don't go across 85 to 86 or you'll you'll pop something. Because that's the coil. Don't jump across the coil. Jump across the common and 87. Okay. I got this all turned off. I'm going to hook up the refrigerant to add it. Screw it on, guys. You just screw this on. It should puncture the cap. Mm -hmm. Now, just hook this up to the low side port. And that's, uh, you have two ports. You got a port down here, which that should be the one. Don't use the one up here. Not, not that one. Use this one down here. Okay. This here's the uh, R134A refrigerant I used to fill up my Dodge Caravan, and. Really, I didn't really care too much for this uh, particular setup. I, I wish this hose was a lot longer. It ended up being a, uh, a really, really hard thing to, to work with because of where the uh, fill port was. This hose needed to be a whole lot longer. But, but uh, let me show you in detail. Like uh, um, this here's the gauge. And when you're putting it on, this says low filled alert. And warning and you just you know want to try to fill it to the blue level best you can and I couldn't show you guys how to hook it up but it really is very simple um, it just pulls up this is just like a quick connect fitting you just pull that back snap it on snap it on let go and it's on then when that's on you start up your compressor and sometimes it sometimes the compressors will kick on when you turn on your system if it has enough pressure but if it doesn't then you have to jump it out and make it manually run like I did mine was so low that uh, it wouldn't come on on its own and then you just push this valve in hold the valve in well, as long as you hold that valve in it starts filling it up and you're done you just you know you want to turn off your compressor turn off your system then pull that out and pop it off just pull that back and pop it off hope that makes sense pretty easy to work with yeah this this, this sucks for length oh yeah this is a pain in the butt should have got a longer hose My stupid thing well, okay, as you can see, I got it pushed on there. It's on, it, the gauge is on there, 
and this gauge is reading all the way green which means it's not filled at all really but really this system sucks because it's got such a short hose and you don't have room to really uh, do what you need to do but I'm gonna leave this here and I'm gonna go start the system and uh, then I'm gonna jump this jump this jump this out and then I'm gonna crack this valve try to fill it up but boy they really didn't leave you any room to see the gauge or anything that's such a short 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 uh, short hose it kind of hose you all right I got the system running I'm gonna jump this out again that will kick on the compressor I don't know how well you can see this, I only got one hand. Pressure's running. Now I should be able to crack this valve. You gotta kind of wiggle this thing. Sand's getting real cold with his nose is flowing. It's starting to go up. It's in the blue. Gotta hold that valve in. That's a crappy system. Fun to add some. Hard to see the gauge. Boy, I wish that hose was longer. I might even have no pin. I think that's gentle. Alright, well, it's empty now. 